My name is John Lee, and uh, I'm here in Africa today after a what seemed to be a 37-hour flight from Dallas. Uh, it really wasn't. It was only 19 hours. And uh, it's been a long time since I was to Africa. Uh, I came here with my father when I was 16. I'm not going to tell you how old I am now, but that was 53 years ago. I'm here with my good friend Larry Anders. Uh, I think that we're going to have a great week, and uh, I know that we will... Uh, take something home with us. Well, hello, I'm Larry Anders. Good morning, thank you. It's good to be in Africa. I can't believe we're finally here after a long flight from the United States. This is my second trip to Africa. First time I came was back in the late 90s with my oldest son who was 16 at the time. I'm uh, not gonna tell you how old I am either, but I'm not as old as John. But it's nice to be here. We're really excited. We're with our guide today, Tillman. <clears throat> Tillman's gonna uh, take us here in the free state. There are a number of species we're going to try to uh, get today. Hopefully we have success, and I know we will because we're in his capable hands. Uh, we'll be back to you to uh, talk more and hopefully uh, share some of our trophies with you. Yeah, guys, we're in the free state here. Yeah? We're sort of in the center of South Africa, picking you guys up at Joburg. We drove basically south for about three hours. Um, there's certain species here that's only indigenous to this area, especially the black wildebeest, the springbok, and the blazebucks and stuff. So that's what we're mainly going to be after. And then you never know, you know, we might bump into something nice along the way. And um, we just checked your guys' guns. Everything's good, so no excuses. No excuses. No excuses. So, <laughs> let's go and shoot some. All right. Yeah. Dandy, my friend. That is a very, very nice one. Look at those knobs. Look at the bosses on it. Yeah, exactly where it was because it was facing us, yeah. ordering towards us. Beautiful. Okay, John, well, your first animal's down. You shot a very nice black wildebeest, also called a white tailed new. Um, we came in here, we saw this herd, it had one bull, made a perfect shot right on the shoulder. Went about 100 yards, started tripling around and fell over. It's indigenous to South Africa. It's the only place in the world where you can find it. And very interesting, it was on the brink of extinction. Uh, there was only about six or 800 of these animals left like 50 years ago. But with very good management and stuff, the numbers are up and uh, they're, they're doing very well. Also, you know, only animal with these muscles at the back here. I don't know why they have them, but it's only animal of that. And yeah. you did a very good shot. Oh, thank you. Well done, thank sir. Thank you. I, and I was wondering about these muscles. The other thing is, is the knobs on the horn are much different from the blue wildebeest. Much, much different. The horns are totally different. You know, they yeah. come forward and down, where the blue wildebeest looks like a buffalo goes right. to the side. So right. It's a different animal. Well, great. Well, I'm glad we found him this morning. Yep, we did. And you did a good <laughs> shot. Well, very good. Thank you. Pleasure.
this is also our our national animal. It's a real old one. You can see how smooth yeah, his horns nice. is down. Very nice. Very, very, very nice. nice. Sir. Oh yeah. Good way to start. Yes it is. Uh, Larry got a very nice spring buck here. We were driving around and we saw this very nice old male and uh, got him down. It's it's very interesting, Larry. It's, it's our national animal in South Africa. Is it? Okay. Yeah, and uh, you get a couple of different varieties. This is the common one. You get a black one as well and a white one. Okay. So it's basically the same animal, just a color variation of the skin. And uh, which is very interesting about this animal, which we actually didn't see. It's very funny it didn't do it. When it dies, the hair on its back stand up mm -hmm. and uh, you know, lies down after a couple of minutes. This one didn't rise. I don't know why. I've never seen them not rise. So um, it's actually got a got a honey smell there as well. If you rub in there and you smell your fingers. Mm -hmm. And as I say, it's a very old male. The males, their horns are very smooth. And well, congratulations. What else Thank can you, I gentlemen. say? Thank you, gentlemen. It was a great job this morning. Um, what's this uh, in the what's what's the predators? This have natural predators here in Africa. Yeah, it has natural predators. This this area has got a lot of caracal and cheetah and stuff, you know. So this is basically what catches these animals because they live in the plains, you know. So when they run away, you'll see if they they jump at a, a very funny they have a very funny jump and then they open up all that hair at the back there. It's really really very nice to Beautiful look at. Animal. So Beautiful. how old would you say he is? Tell yes, me. I think this this buck is at least close to 10 years. Okay. It's a very, very old spring buck. Well, Tillman, thank you. It's, it's been a great start pleasure, to the Larry. trip. No great problem. start to the trip. We're looking forward to more of this. Definitely. Okay. Three different kinds of springbok here, yeah? and uh, we got the common this morning. We got the black one now, very nice black one. And uh, as well, you know, did a good shot. It went down, walked up to it, tried to get up, but um, we had to put another one in it. But it's down. It's a very nice black springbok. What do you think about it? Beautiful color. And there's three species yeah. of these animals native to Africa. Is that right, Tillman? Just native to this area. Yeah, you can't get them anywhere else. Okay. How old do you think this animal is? That's what? also quite an old, probably about eight years. Seven, do they eight get years, Do yeah. they get as big as the common? No. The okay, red, they're smaller. Yeah, they're smaller, yeah. Okay. The white one is also smaller. Noticed his hair stand up. His hair stood up. up, yeah. We got that nice on video. And it's so. got a white nose. Mm -hmm. Beautiful animal. Beautiful animal. Tell well me, done, thank sir. You. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. It's a great hunt already. These glands they uh -huh. have, these blaze buck and the bonder buck have glands there that they mark their territories and stuff. Yeah. With. Got yourself a very, very, very nice blaze buck, yeah? It was a good shot. Um, I can promise you it's going to be a, a gold medal. It's a very, very nice one. It's one of the best ones I've ever taken of clients. Also endemic to this area. So, very nice. What do you think about it? I think it's fantastic and I was really glad to find one this big. Yeah, it's a very, very big one. They're they're tough to find. Uh -huh, they tough are. to find. Yeah, they are. And this one is so nice and dark in the back too. Very nice colors. Very, Very nice, nice colors. colors. Yeah. Great. Well, well sir, listen, thank you. Good shooting. Well yeah, done. You, you know how to find them. Yeah, good. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.
Easy. Just check, just check, just check. He's going, he's going, he's going, he's going. He's going. A good shot. Oh, good. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. Break He's down. down. He went good. down. Good, good shot. shot. Thanks, well done. Well done. Very nice. He's down. Thank you, Tillman. One shot, two. Perfect. Look at the shot there. Unbelievable. And a dandy. Look at this blizz buck. Yeah. Beautiful, That's, beautiful. Yeah, he's bigger than the one I've got. Well done, Thank sir. Thank you, Tillman. Good shot. Good Perfect shot. shot. John got a very nice blizz buck, and you decided you want another one. I was jealous. You saw a very nice one, yeah? <laughs> and, uh, well, we got up to it. You did a perfect shot. You can't ask any better. You went a couple of yards, fell over stone dead. And uh, what do you think about it? I don't think he's beautiful. Um, I've got one from my last trip, but I don't think he's as big as this one. And I, his big body mass. He sure was hanging with those flat ones, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah. You were staying, sticking to the back of the group. Yeah, that way yeah. you could identify him quite yeah. easily. Anyway. Well, I'm, I'm glad you got eyes because I couldn't pick him out right at the last when you said there he is. Good. I appreciate it. Tell me he's a great animal. Thank you. Big pleasure, my it, friend. Great it's, shot. It's, it's been a great hunt so far. We're just getting started. Tillman, uh, now that I've got my breath, I can talk again. We must have walked, what, a mile, a mile and a half for this animal? Well, we walked a long ways after this one. Tell me, this is a, uh, this animal is, is, was nearly extinct at one time, yeah, is that a, right? You know, it's a bontebuck. Um, they say that there were only like six left, you know, six purebred ones in the world. And uh, at this stage, they talk about 2,500 or 3,000 that's left. So it's, there's not a lot of them. It's also a Cites one animal, you know. Yeah. Um, it's high on the, on the protected species list. I see. But, um, you know, it's a, it's a very nice example, you know. You have the, the white rump, yeah. It's a, it's a family of the bleeze buck, but, you know, an actual fact, totally different. And, uh, you know, a broken blaze on the front. The horns are much blacker than the bleeze buck. Remember the bleeze buck had yeah. those white ivory rings. These don't get it. The horns are completely black and the rings are very pronounced. And as you say, yeah, we, we walked a long ways after him and... And got him in the end, but it was a tough stalk. You know, they, in the open, they they ran a lot because there was a lot of animal, other animals also around. You know, mm -hmm. there was a big herd of games buck. There were two bleeds buck with him, and uh, you know, we just couldn't get a shot every time something happened. The games buck would spook, the bleeds buck mm -hmm. would spook, and we just never got close. But in the end, we got him, and uh, it was a good shot. Well, he's a beautiful it's animal. A beautiful, beautiful, beautiful animal. markings on this animal. Very chocolate brown on yeah. the rumpy, as you can see. How that, many so. of these animals are in South Africa now? About 2,500. So all in South Africa. All in South Africa. Okay. Well, Tillman, again, we've had a great morning. I think we we're going to the house, and we spotted this, so it's yep. really appreciative. I thank it's, you very it's much. It's a pleasure, Larry. It was thank a... you, Tillman. There's some white blaze buck just over the ridge here. Okay. And I saw some zebra as well. Alright. So let's take a little bit of a stalk. It's quite a nice setup here. There's some trees and it's a little bit of a ridge we can okay. walk below and then we we'll see if we can get close in what we see there, okay? Okay. okay. I'm following. Okay. Beautiful him. Nice buck. Mm -hmm. Very nice. He doesn't move an inch. That's the way to shoot then. Well, Tillman, we finally got him. Yeah, I think this is the third white bleeze buck you've put me on today. I finally was able to get a clean shot off and you just put us right up on him. I thank you for that. Um, 
And we got a common bleasbuck this morning, right? Yeah, it's going to fit really well, you know. Basically, there's the two major species of these are the, the wide and the common. There's another one called a, a yellow or something, but they there are very, very few of them. Mm -hmm. But this is basically the two main species. And, you know, they look, look really nice on a pedestal together. Okay. You know, and uh, you got a really nice common this morning. We had a bit of a problem getting you onto one of these, but, I mean, it happened nicely this afternoon. Put in a nice stalk. Yep. He was standing exactly where you wanted him to, and you did a perfect shot. He didn't move an inch. didn't yeah. even kick. So, thank you, Larry. Had, well I had, done. I had, had a great guide. It's a pleasure. Now, this animal is not as big as the common no, blue spot. No, right? it's a little bit smaller in body than one. Yeah. Well, he's beautiful. I'm really proud of him. I want to thank you again, Tillman. It's been a it's been a great hunt, and this is just day one. I think a toast is in order. To our first day in Africa. First day in Africa. What a day. It was. I wasn't ready to come in. Were you? Yeah, I thought this morning I was going to have to bend the rifle barrel for you. <laughs> I thought you'd bend it on the airplane. Man, man, I don't know what I was Boy, doing. Boy, it sure straightened out about noon, though, didn't it? Well, I never would have thought I'd go through nearly a box of shells the first day that I'm I never here. thought I'd go through a full <laughs> box of shells in the first day. But boy, it was a great day. These uh, accommodations are great. Oh. The food's been great. Hospitality. Is. Our guides have been wonderful. Whoever thought we would have seven animals by the end of the first day? I tell you, you made a great shot on that that uh, black wildebeest this morning. Though that was a wonderful shot. Oh, beautiful, thank you. beautiful animal. Did you see the? Did you see the knobs on those horns? Mm -hmm. I did. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I, hopefully tomorrow one will make its way into my. See, I'm, I'm going to have to come back and get a blue wildebeest now because my blo my blue is going to look so bad. Next to the next to the black. Well, I bet they can fix you up on that. I think there's, a big, I'm I think there's a big black one out there with your name on it. Oh. But boy, this has been a great day. I'm telling you this, uh, uh, and I think this was a good start yeah. to because uh, I mainly came for a line and uh, getting a day to kind of get your feel for the terrain and uh, get acclimated to your gun and so forth. I think that's that's really going to be beneficial. Yeah, but think about nine more days of what we're going to yeah. do and, and what you, we've got to and, go after. When we shot that sunset tonight, when we made that picture, I thought that guys, you know, there's no place else in the world. No, like that. no. Um, I, I definitely want to try to come back, and I'm sure that that this uh, trip will be a memory for a, for a lifetime. I'm, I'm confident of that. That's you know true. what? What about the guys that bailed out on us? Don't, don't you know that when they see all that we t have done here, they're going to really be poor in devils. <laughs> <laughs> well, John, to future success, congratulations yes, to what Africa about, again. To, to Africa again. That was some hard work to get that animal down. Oh. Isn't he a beauty? He is a beauty. And then look at the beautiful markings on his front legs here. Oh, a real dandy. And what a good shot, my man. Oh. Very well. I can't believe that he escaped us all day yesterday. And then uh, this morning, this trek over the mountain, he knew we were coming. He goes back to the other side. Then we come around here. Then he goes to the other side of the mountain. He's very clever, I'll say that. He was very clever. You know, yesterday we saw them first. Um, could have been the same one, I'm not sure. Um, got off a shot, but um, the brush was too thick. They didn't eat him, and then they just vanished. You know, I they know. went up the mountain this morning. Well, basically the same thing happened. Yeah, same thing. We saw them in the open when we saw the females yesterday. A very, very good shot. Oh, and, thank uh, you. It's a very nice specimen of the, of the species. It's going to make the record book. So well done, sir. Beautiful thank animal. Thank you.
Tillman. Great, great animal. Man, what a, what a uh, elusive creature this one is. You know, John, John had several shots yesterday at the one he took a little bit earlier in the morning, and this one was running with him yesterday, I think, right? Yeah, I think so, yeah. And then uh, they've separated this morning just as we got onto the ranch, went in different directions, and the trackers picked up the picked up the sign of this one again. And this one was running with a bunch of females. Yeah, yeah. So, they they left the females a couple of a mile or so away, and the two bulls went on their own. Yeah. And uh, you know, luckily there was two. The one was a little bit smaller than this one, but um, it all turned out well. You know, we we got in a good shot. It was a running shot, but you did it perfectly. Broke his neck. He never moved. And, uh, well, what can we say? Here he is. He's beautiful. I tell you, you don't get an appreciation of how uh, athletic these animals are until you have to try climb to climb these hills to find them. Yeah. And he was moving fast when we made that shot. It wasn't, wasn't long. No, that was if, a good shot. If we hadn't uh, hadn't taken him when you said shoot, we wouldn't have got him. He'd yeah. been long gone again. Well, tell me, it's great. Uh, another another successful, successful bag. I appreciate it. Thanks well again done, Larry. Good shot. My God, we now got us a white blaze buck. Eventually we did. Yeah. <laughs> this was an ordeal chasing this thing. You know, it's so difficult. There's like 60 animals in that herd to pick out. There's only one good male in there. Yeah. To pick out him, you know, after chasing and chasing and chasing. And then they stand, you know, and if it's in the middle, it's very difficult to see which one is which. So it, it eventually yeah. it well, all he, happened. But He was hiding in the middle. He he was smart. Definitely. <laughs> no, we, we certainly worked hard for this one, you know. It's... He's very smart. He was always in the middle, you know, when he's on the side, something walks in front of him or it's not the angle is not good, so but it worked out in the end. Yeah. And it uh, was something. Got ourselves a night white bleach buck, so Well I tell you the white is is so different from the others, but I tell you in size does the white run a little smaller or a little bigger a little than smaller, the common? A little smaller. A little smaller. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, he was he might have been smaller but he sure was tougher. Much smarter. <laughs> Well, John? Well, thank you well very done, much. Sir. It's great. Good shooting.
uh, some uh, the uh, black wildebeest. We saw several herds and they, they don't sit still very long. They continue to, to move around. And while we were looking for them, we also saw the red hearted beast. And we, uh, they were all kind of running together and running in different directions. So we started late this morning with, what would you think, about a two mile stalk? Probably, yeah. Something like that. Uh, thank goodness it was down the hill, not mm -hmm, up the hill. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise you might have to airlift me out of here today. <laughs> and then uh, as we were leaving, uh, we kind of lost sight of the animals and then we were going down the road. The John had shot a zebra earlier in the morning and uh, they were coming back to, to help us try to push the animals. And they thought they saw the wildebeest on next to the road. Mm -hmm. So we got out of the truck and I didn't hit him clean, So, uh, but uh, but wounded him. I'm amazed how strong these animals are and how, how tough they really are. This, uh, that ensued another long stalk. And uh, I'm just thankful for your and Joseph's tracking ability, we were able to find him and finally put a shot in him and take him down. Yeah. And these animals are just are, in, are indigenous to this area, is that right? That is true. There's no other place we can find them. You know, we saw there were five, and uh, we managed to find that little herd again, but he, we, obviously he wasn't there. And we started walking around and jumped him. Yep. And we just followed and followed until we got him in this open plain, yeah? And uh, we were lucky enough with all those trees to make a good stalk on him and got within like 150 yards and you put him yep. down, so. Well, gentlemen, yeah, thank you. It's Appreciate it. It's been a pleasure. Thank Very you. good black wildebeest. Thank you. Well, Larry, we're leaving the free state now and going to the northwestern Cape. And all I can tell you is uh, we looks like we're about 14 animals up. And uh, I can't tell you, I haven't ever had this much fun in a long time. It's, it's been... I started to say I've had this much fun with my clothes on, but... <laughs> <laughs> better be careful. Better there. be careful where this film might go. That's right. That's right. <laughs> No, it's been a great trip, John. This is just our second day, and uh, we had a, uh, another successful day of hunting, starting off early this morning with the lechery, and then uh, you've got a zebra, couple of zebras this at this morning, and uh, I went on the trek of the Odyssey uh, trying to get that black wildebeest, but we finally succeeded on that. And tomorrow it's lions. It is. Lions that? tomorrow. So I, I can't wait. That was a, I'm, that's I'm ready. the highlight of the trip. But I'm ready. It's been great so far, and I think we're going to be... Uh, Honey near the Kalahari Desert, I believe, isn't that right? That's right in the edge of it. Yeah. On the so, northwestern Cape. Well, it's been a it's been a great trip. Again, I know the guys that didn't uh, didn't make it with us are gonna be envious beyond beyond imagination, aren't they're they? They're already they're already worried. <laughs> I phoned them. <laughs> well, to good to more good hunting. More good hunting. <laughs> Thank you. Well, are you ready for this lion hunt? I am. This is day three. This is what I came for. So Me too. I'm Me really too. looking forward to this. You know, we left uh, the Free State yesterday uh, late in the afternoon and drove, seemed like forever, but the guy said it was about a five and a half hour ride by car. And we've arrived at the Sandhurst Safaris camp where we're going to hunt lions this morning. And uh, there are definitely lions here. I heard them all night. Well, I heard them all night. We got a little bit of a preview this morning. It seems that. Uh, one of the lines got loose last night, and uh, I hope it was yours. I but understand, anyway, I understand he, it is. <laughs> he was uh, he was uh, chasing some cattle this morning. Yeah. And uh, but he's over in some real tall grass, so you won't have any trouble. You can hear him coming. Well, this is uh, this going to be an exciting day. I, I kind of tossed and turned a little last night. Like, like, I had that same feeling I had before a big sporting event when I was a younger man. So you still got that guardian angel medal? I Absolutely, gave you. I have it. I okay. have it. I'm taking it with me too. <laughs> And I got my running shoes on Good. just in case. I, I even put on my running <laughs> shoes this morning. <laughs> now I bet I bet everything goes well. We're we're in a good uh, good hands. We got a great hunter, so we're going to do just fine. Great, John, to a successful lion hunt. Good. Okay. See you.
Well, Tillman, this is the main reason I came to Africa. Wow, what a what a spectacular spectacular hunt this morning. What a trophy, huh? Gorgeous. Full main, full main line, the king of the jungle. He is beautiful. You know, on the way here yesterday, I think it was John and myself were talking about how quickly these lions can climb into trees with these dogs. You know, you're thinking it's the king of the jungle and there's this couple of dogs barking and he's up in a tree. You know, they saw him this morning. He came out and was in the cattle ranch and they found the tracks and not too long we saw him, chased him around a little bit. No? Uh, quite, a, quite a little bit. Yeah, you know, <laughs> over trees and did a bit of bulldozing. <laughs> And suddenly there he was, in a tree. In a tree. As we predicted. And, uh, well, <laughs> he didn't basically move. You know, he shot, I think there's two shots in the same hole back here. I see in another one somewhere, which were just insurance. I mean, he was dead as a, as a stone from the first one. You got him perfectly. But as you say, Larry, what a lion. I mean, oh, he's gorgeous. He's even got hair right on his tummy back here. Yeah, yeah. Unbelievable. He's a beauty. Well, tell he's me, this, this was the highlight of my trip, was coming to take a lion and... Um, and you guys said I'd get one, I'd get a big one. I, you, you certainly came through. I really, really appreciate it. Clayton said this morning when we started that it's likely that we may see one either under the bush or climb the tree yeah. once, once the dog's got his scent. And uh, we were coming down the, down the road and probably four or 500 yards from where we entered the, the ranch, there was something kind of sticking its head up. And Clayton said at first, that may be a cow. I said, I don't know, that looks kind of like a lion. <laughs> he said, I don't have my glasses, so we quickly found some binoculars. He said, that's a lion. About the time we got off the truck, he, yeah. he ran in. But, man, I am just tickled to death to get him. Yeah, I want to thank you again, buddy. It's a Great. big pleasure, Larry. It's Appreciate been a it. a pleasure hunting with you guys so far. And, and more to come. Again. More to much come. Much more to come. Thank you, Tillman. Well done, Appreciate Seth. it. Ultimate trophy. <laughs> chase wasn't it <laughs> unbelievable I, I can't believe it it had fed on that donkey that was up by the by the road and then it had gone to water and come back across here uh, back across that road and back down here when the dogs got on it I mean it was uh, incredible the way that thing was running through there have you I guess you've seen them run that way they can run believe me you know over, over these bushes and underneath trees and but as Slayton said, you know, the, the shadow. It was yeah. in the shadow of the of the branches because you know it's getting hot and they he's fed, you know, obviously I noticed, drank water. And, yeah. Uh, and he took took to a lot of that lower brush yeah. too until the dogs got on him and then he ran like hell. Yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah. He did. But well, he's got in he's a big body he's a big lion. Big, body big bodied. Lion. Very big body yeah. lion. Uh -huh. Very nice. Well, I'm extremely happy that we got this, I'm telling you. <laughs> all before 10 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, all before 10 o'clock in the morning. I can't tell you, I'm glad Larry talked me into coming on this lion hunt. Definitely. This was uh, this was really worth the trouble. Uh, well, John, it's great. Well done, sir. And thank done. you for everything. Boy, you can, you can find them. It's a big pleasure. <laughs> 
Well, I guess today we're going to be uh, after the Elan and the and the Kudu, the Greater Kudu, and we're here on the uh, we're here on the Limpopo River, which is the border between uh, this province and Botswana. Mm -hmm. And uh, was that a fence intimidating with that electricity in it? You know, we need that in America between, well, between the U.S. and Mexico. That would some, be, that some would people be, think that. Yeah, yeah, we do, we do. I, I vote for that. Yeah, well, I'll tell you, it's uh, it's quite a fence and the amount of voltage that goes through that. And they put that up about 20 years ago. It's uh, it's quite an interesting story that goes behind that fence, but that's for another day. Yeah. We're here to well, get hunting. some, do some hunting and day to uh, uh, look for a kudu, the greater kudu and uh, a lawn. Well, and, uh, John, it's good to be here. Uh, we drove forever from uh, what I guess was the Kalahari Desert, basically. Yeah. Uh, we were in the car nearly 11 hours yesterday. That's right. We made made camp here. No, it wasn't yesterday. It was last night. Last night. <laughs> yesterday, last night. We're here. Uh, and I hunted this area somewhere in here back in 1999 when I was here last, but it wasn't this specific farm. Yeah. But uh, Davi said the the ranch is loaded with uh, lots of game, uh, eland, uh, kudu. He said we'll probably see some zebra. Uh, so uh, more of the Plains game variety today and uh, like the uh, every day I'm quite sure we'll have a successful hunt and uh, more to tell. Right. See you later. Good hunting. Bye. Bye. <laughs>
today we're uh, we're after more planes game. John, I believe you're trying to take a kudu and uh, an eland maybe today. Yeah, kudu and an eland, and uh, I'm still getting my breath from yesterday. That uh, was quite a hike. Three and a half uh, miles is only part of what you did. <laughs> Well, at least like I said I got a little exercise yeah, while I was here. Yeah, it did get some exercise. The food has the food's been great, so I needed to get a little you need, exercise. You need that. That's but great. Uh, it's another beautiful day here in Africa. Uh, we'll have more, hopefully, another successful hunt today. And John, I suggest congratulations and and shoot straight. Shoot straight. I will. I will today. shoot straight, and you'll <laughs> see from us tomorrow. <laughs> Well done, sir. <laughs> Man, he's got horns, huh? That's a nice ball. Beautiful. Perfect shot. Well, Tillman, you you really put us on that thing from the up on the side of the mountain down to that water hole. I mean, uh, I, I couldn't even hardly see that far, much less see that animal that far. <laughs> yeah, you know, we, we chased the uh, eland around all day yesterday before Larry got his. We were in a different area and uh, Today, oh well, there's got a lot of eland on this place, but as you guys can see, it's much more thicker here than we where we were yesterday. So it's a, you know, even if they stand 100 yards from the truck, you're not going to see them. So, you know, there's a nice mountain that we always climb and you can look down, you know, and, and I left you guys at the truck and went forward and saw these. There was a couple of impala, there was some warthog, and there's two elands, a cow and this bull, and uh, got you up there and it, it worked out well. Well, I'll tell you that the animal itself is, is considerably different from uh, Larry's eland of yesterday. Yeah, Larry's, the, the, the one he shot had a lot of Livingston blood in it. This is more the Cape eland. You'll see the color is, is a little bit different. Larry's is a bit more dark on the neck. Um, he had a lot of hair on the face, which this one don't have. But the horns on this is very good, and uh, it's a very, very good eland. But the one Larry got yesterday is more of a Livingston eland, and this is more of a Cape eland. All the senses on an eland is excellent. There's nothing that he lacks of in anything. So when you get one of them, you can pat yourself on the back and say, I've done a good job, because it's really a tough animal to get, especially in this area. Yep. Well, John, well, the good job itself, I think, was the job you did of spotting him in the first thank place. Thank you, sir. And John, congratulations. And, well, thank you Great very trophy. much. Great, Great eland. Trophy. Yeah. shooting wasn't the greatest, but uh, uh, it's an excellent trophy, uh, a very, very uh, magnificent animal, an excellent, trophy, uh, excellent specimen, and I think you said he's part of the kudu family, is that right? That is correct. He's part of the kudu, and the uh, eland and the bushpuck are all the same family. The um, scientific name meaning spiral horn, because obviously you can see why. And uh, they, you know, it's, it's a more difficult animal to hunt these spiral horns because of the habitat that they, they like. They love the thick brush. They're not out in the open very often. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
you know, we know these Nyala love this river bottom and, you know, some time or another you're going to bump into them and that's what we did. We persevered and we came up tops and there he is. Well, he's a beautiful animal. Really? We had a bit of fun with Nikita chasing him yes, and catching him and, but there he's down. Nikita um, made me run this afternoon, yeah. which was fun. I'm glad we had the dog though. We might not have found him for yeah. a while. So that was, that was really great. I was asking Dobby earlier how many of this animals might be on the farm and he said uh, it's hard to tell because of the habitat that they they occupy they they hide so easily very, very, even very from well. the air it's very difficult yeah. to see them well tillman it was an excellent trophy um i understand also this is a uh, maybe one of the favorite animals for lion as well definitely well but tillman thanks again for a successful hunt it's More a to pleasure come. it's a Thank pleasure you. larry I'm telling you, this has been a day. After we tracked this thing, uh, our Larry's down in that river bottom, then come up to the top of this mountain, it's amazing the difference in terrain that these things spend their time in. What about the difference between the males and the females? Huh? There's a lot of difference. I can't believe it. <laughs> and I was always wondering, will I ever be able to recognize their horns? Boy, you can see them when they're there. Definitely. You get them silhouetted this time of day. Definitely. Yeah. No, it is a very nice Nyala. We came up here and he was with one doe. And uh, I think she was in the rut, you know, he was a little bit behind her, so that gave us a chance and he did a perfect shot. Yeah, the brown legs on this one are amazing. I, th I never knew that they got that light. Very, very nice. You know, yeah. it's a problem if you do a shoulder mount, you lose all that. So this is yeah. one of the animals that um, yeah, this should you really be... need to make a full mount. Yeah, you need to full mount this yeah. time. Yeah. Well, thanks again. I'm telling so, you, it was a, a wonderful John. day we had today. Wonderful day. Well done. Nice way to end it. Tillman, this has been a this has been a long hunt to find this, hadn't it? My goodness, I, what is this the third day we've hunted kudu? But uh, it looks like it's all been worth every bit of it. You know, the, the, they say the last hour of the last day is the most important. Well, here it come in. You know, and tomorrow we're going to Buffalo Camp. This is our last day in Limpopo. It's four o'clock. The last day tomorrow morning, four o'clock, we're leaving. So you know, this was like the last last minute deal. It, it, it was getting down and it was getting pretty close, but my God, what a specimen we've found here. So I wish you'd look at the base on those horns. Good shot, John. Well, thank you very One much. One shot again. One shot. Limpopo's <laughs> been good to you. It has. <laughs> well, we, we got what we came for. This is the basically the second last animal you're looking for, except for the buffalo. It was the kudu, so we spent some time a couple of days and we got a nice one. We really did, and it was quite a stock. It was. Thank you. Well done, John. Tillman, we had uh, just finished taking John's kudu and loaded up the truck and had uh, pulled out. And I, this wasn't a species that I was really 
looking for, but uh, we had made probably um, 100 yards, 200 yards down the road after we uh, picked up John's kudu, and we saw these group of kudus walking in the in the bush back here, and you pointed out this one because of the size of his horns, and I was able to uh, to get a shot on him. My son, back in 1999, when he was with Out of Africa, shot two kudus, so I really wasn't uh, looking for one, but it's funny you pointed him out because I was just thinking if a nice one uh, presented itself today, I might try to take him. So thank you, Tillman. This is a very, very nice animal. Yeah, it's a very, very good kudu. It's a very nice bull. Shape is perfect, you know. Um, we got the Nyala already a couple of days ago, and we got the kudu, and if all luck goes, we might get the bush buck and you got the eel, and then you have all four spider lawns that we have to offer you in one safari. That's great. That doesn't happen every day, so... It's been good and you did a great shot. Well, thank you, Tim. Well done. Uh, Beautiful you, you specimen. You did a great job putting me on the game once again. Thank you. Got a nice zebra today, yeah? Huh? I did. Thank you, Tillman. You was, put us right on him. Yeah, it was a very good shot. We found this one studying on its own. He's really very nicely marked, you know. And he's a very good specimen of the Birchall zebra, which we got now. You get some other kinds as well. You get some in East Africa called the Grievies. Mm -hmm. And then you get some in Namibia called the Hartmann's Mountain Zebra, which is quite distinguishable. The stripes are much narrow and it's got a dewlap, mm -hmm. a little bit of a dewlap like the eland you shot. But this is a very nice specimen. It was one stallion on its own. Put in a very good shot, he ran like 50 yards and went down. We've been hunting zebra off and on since we got here. Mm -hmm. We've seen them a couple of times. I actually got one shot off a few days ago, but uh, didn't, didn't make the, the shot clean. So this is really a, a nice treat to the trip. To me, the zebra is one of the signature animals of Africa. Definitely. And very, 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 very unique. You were telling me something, Tillman, when we sat down about the age of this zebra. You thought he was very old because his teeth were just His teeth gone. were worn down a lot, so he's, he's an old zebra. That's probably why he was on his own as well. So. Okay. Well, Tillman, he's another beautiful trophy. Once again, thank you for putting me right on this game. I really appreciate Good it. Good shot, Larry. Well, Larry, here we are at the uh, northern gate of Kruger Park. We're on the Mozambique border and uh, we're ready for buffalo today. Mm -hmm. And uh, gosh, what a heck of a day we had yesterday. Uh, we're down towards the last two days of the hunting trip, which has been great. Again, out of Africa and all the staff have just been tremendous to us. And we broke camp early this morning. And as you said, John, we're near the Mozambique border here at the north entrance of the Kruger Park. And uh, today and tomorrow, if need be, is, uh, is Cape Buffalo. So. Uh, Cape Buffalo. And I know you'll continue to shoot straight and well, and best of luck to you today, John, and hopefully the next time that uh, we speak, we'll both have uh, nabbed our Cape Buffalo. I have a little educational bonus before we quit, Larry. This is a six-year snail. I was wondering what that was. And that snail is very unusual, and you find them here in Africa. Uh, that snail comes out of that shell and looks at the sunlight once every six years. Wow. I thought it was something from the prehistoric era. <laughs> <laughs> Well, John, finally we caught up to them and we got a good look at them. Looks they There's four bulls, but four bulls. They, are, they are still too young, we can't shoot them. Um, their bosses are still soft, 
So we just let them go and we're going to carry and look for some more. Find one with a hard top. Yep, one of the hard top. He's facing this way. He's facing this way. Can you just see? Yeah. Hold it. Okay. Can you I see, see him? I okay. see him. Shoot him. Shoot him. Shot. <laughs> well done. Thank you, sir. Great boom. And a great, great, great shot. Thank you. Oh, boom. Nice Hard bosses, nice skin, nice and wide, very good. Still hunting with Larry Anders. We've just shot this nice blue wildebeest. We've been hunting buffalo, Larry. Yes. And we had this one bull that kept chasing this bloody buffalo away. I mean, every time we came around the corner tracking them, he was with them and his eyes and ears are much better than theirs and he'll take off and the buffalo behind him, he just wouldn't leave them. So the next time he presented himself, we decided, well, let's give him a go, you know, let's shoot him because <laughs> otherwise he's going to keep us running all day long. So, Well, he is a nice, nice trophy. Uh, we've been looking for blue wildebeest off and on for the last several days and I think you're right, this has been keeping the buffalo spooked because every time we get tracking close to a cape, he seemed to be nearby and, mm. and startle him and, and make our uh, stalking uh, all for naught. But he is a, a great trophy and this rounds out, I took the black wildebeest back in the free state. So this is a really nice trophy. And again, uh, as always, Tillman, you put me right on the game and gave me an opportunity to make a good clean shot with little obstruction. So he's, a, he's gonna look good in my house. Mm -hmm. Well done, Larry. Thank you, Tillman. It was Tillman. a great shot. Appreciate it. We're on the last day of our hunt. Uh, we've taken a pause from hunting Cape Buffalo for a little bit and the veterinarian has rejoined us this morning. We're going to attempt to dart a rhino. Uh, this was something we were trying to do Sunday, but the uh, heat and the exertion of the animals forced the vet to abandon the, the track for the dart because he felt like the medicine would be uh, too traumatic and possibly fatal to the animal. So we're going to try, it's much cooler this morning, we're going to try this again this morning and then uh, hopefully resume our, uh, have a successful rhino darting and then resume our Cape Buffalo hunt. Okay, Larry, this is the gun you're going to use today. Mm -hmm. uh, the system of propulsion is using a 2 2 blank. Okay. It's a 22 cartridge with just a blank, you know. Then the dart fits in here, it works with the gas system. Okay. And then the dart obviously goes out of the big barrel here. Okay. So um, it's making a little bit of a noise, but there's no kick or anything to okay. it. Okay. You just slide the dart in here, close it, and ready to go. Good. Next to the rhino now, the drug is taking effect. He's uh, 
he's, he's feeling the effects of the drug. The vet's going to take some blood samples for DNA testing. And first one things that they do to try to keep up the health of the herd. It's amazing to be that they're this big and to be this close to something this big. I don't think I've ever been this close to something this big that's still alive. Look at the muscle from this animal. How old is this rhino? Nine. Nine. <clears throat> yeah, the animal is still alive. The vet's uh, watching very closely. He's taking samples for, for blood, for DNA, and uh, some other things that he'll he'll do once here in a little bit we'll administer the antidote the animal will come back the drug will be neutralized the animal will come back to life it's amazing it be this close to something this big it's still alive and obviously he's probably not going to be very happy with us when he comes when he gets away you okay been administered, the animal's coming back, he's uh, trying to sit up, the, the drug is being neutralized, and according to Lewis, as soon as the drug takes effect, he'll, he'll have no uh, uh, aftermath from the, from the anesthesia. Well, Lewis, I want to thank you again for uh, coming again and joining us again this morning and uh, helping me dart that rhino. What a magnificent experience that big, is. Uh, He's big. What did you say they weigh in the wild? About two to two and a half tons. This one probably weighs 2,200 kgs. He's a, he's a big animal. I've, yeah, big, I can't, can't believe I was that close to something that big and it was still alive. Nice. What, what an experience. <laughs> Lewis, thank All you right. again. Best of luck to you, doctor. See you. Okay, see you. Bye-bye. Congratulations. What do you think? It's a beautiful nice. bird. Well, Tillman, we ran into the tracks on this devil uh, yesterday morning about 10 o'clock, and we followed him all through the morning. And then tomorrow afternoon, then the next afternoon, yesterday afternoon, for about uh, four hours up until it was almost dark. And then this morning for another, I guess, couple of hours. And then here we are now right after lunch, and we finally, uh, finally were able to uh, get a shot at him. Boy, what a wonderful specimen he is. And I don't have any clue how big he is, but I'll tell you this, he's the biggest one I ever have had anything to do with. Well, and he's John, certainly bigger than my other one. I think he's, he's the biggest one I've ever had to do with as well. I reckon this buffalo is not going to be smaller than 44 inches, which is unbelievably big. It's a beautiful specimen. He's got a wide boss. He's an old bull. He's got drop. He's got the points turning. You cannot ask for anything else. As you say, we've worked hard for him and it all just happened and you did an absolutely fantastic shot. Well, thank I you. Couldn't believe that shot. You did perfectly <laughs> well and it's a great buffalo. Well thank done, John. Thank you. Thank you.
after he shot it, it ran up to a hill right behind us. We ran to this side. He stopped because the first shot was a good shot. But when he saw us, he came straight, straight for forward. us. Yeah, he did. Luckily, we turned it about 10, 15 yeah. yards from us up this hill. Yeah. Well, he's a great animal. Thank great. you, Davi. Thank yeah. you. I'm here with Davi, the uh, owner of Out of Africa Safaris, and uh, it's our last day. We're uh, still in the Limpopo province uh, near the north end of the Kruger Park, and uh, we've been hunting Cape Buffalo primarily since we arrived. Uh, this is our second Cape Buffalo that we've taken today. My partner, John, uh, got an exceptional Cape Buffalo earlier in the day, and uh, after we got him loaded in the truck, we proceeded to search out f for a second one, and we found this uh, great old bull with a uh, very deep boss. I don't know, Dobby, how old you, would you say this bull is? It's about seven, eight years. So he's about the same age as John's bull was. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, this uh, trip has been everything, and I thought it would be, and more. And uh, Dobby, you and, and all the professional staff at out of Africa have just been tremendous. The uh, the the PH uh, Tillman has been great to us throughout the whole trip, putting us on game and giving us opportunities to make great shots. And uh, I um, I I'd heard that these animals can charge you, and I got to live it up <laughs> close and personal. And uh, I was really thankful that I had you with me because he got within about 15 yards of us, and you you turned him there, and uh, we were able to put a couple more shots in him and put him down. Yeah, well, Larry, I think it's a great experience. I mean, you did a perfect shot on him, about 80 yards. And, um, I mean, it was a good shot. And we just followed up, and about 30, 40 yards from us, he started to towards us and charge us, and luckily we got it down. Well, I can tell you this, I don't want to relive that charge anymore <laughs> real soon. Thank you, Dolly. Congratulations. It's been, it's been great. Thank great. you. Tillman, this is a, a nice water buck that we found again this afternoon. I believe we had saw this same animal earlier this morning when we pulled out of the lodge, and uh, he was running with a couple of other bucks. And uh, you immediately picked up on him because of the size of his horns. And uh, we tried to get a shot off on him, but he disappeared into the bush, and we really didn't get a chance. And later this afternoon, as we were driving around the, the uh, farm, he presented himself again and gave us an opportunity. And once again, you, as always, throughout this entire hunt, you were. Uh, quick to spot him and gave me an opportunity to get off a shot between some thick brush and, uh, and here we have a great water buck. I already had a water buck but I, the trophy I have at home didn't have near the horn size that this animal has. This is a fantastic water buck Larry. Um, it's, a, it's a very wide one you know it's really gonna look nice on your wall. It's, it's displays really well and it's very long as well. As you say we saw it this morning and this afternoon we were lucky enough to bump into it again and Things worked out well and we got off a shot and there he is and you did a great shot well, and thank you, Tillman. That's all we asked for and well done again. Thank you again, Good bud. I partner. appreciate it, Tillman. Thank you. Well, John, you know, there's an old saying that uh, all good things must come to an end and um, I guess using that as a backdrop, uh, we are in our last night in Africa. Um, seemed like we just got here and uh, the build up to the trip was, uh, um, I couldn't hardly, hardly wait and we got here. Um, week ago Sunday and began hunting a week ago yesterday and here it is Tuesday night uh, and I'm losing track of the days and the time of the month but I think it's uh, September the 26th and um, man what a week boy what a spectacular group of animals we took today was really something special they say sometimes that the you save the best for last and boy what a day today was started off with your excitement <laughs> there and then uh, we went on from there to darting the rhino and gosh, what a what an experience that was! And uh, then from there we uh, hunted buffalo after lunch. We were both successful in that, and uh, 
I mean, I don't think I've ever seen two finer buffalo one time anywhere than those two. And then uh, later this afternoon, gosh, what a shot you made on that uh, water buck. I mean, it was, uh, it was incredible. And I've never seen water buck horns like the horns on that one you got this afternoon. Well, John, I t just tell you again, the, the staff of Out of Africa and our, our PH uh, Tillman was just great all uh, the entire time we were here. He put us uh, in positions to make shots and uh, found game. He'd see, you know, I'd point out game and he'd already had seen it and was on the ne to the next thing. But uh, I don't consider myself a very, very uh, terribly skillful hunter. And he gave me opportunities to, to make shots that um, I couldn't have made on my own. So that was one of the things that I wanted to make this trip for was that buffalo. Yeah, you talked a lot about that a lot, and uh, I'm also glad, John, that uh, you you made the decision to take a line while you were here. You know, you were talking about the buffalo, I was talking about the line, and uh, we both, I think, came away with some we, outstanding. We trophies. both changed our mind. We both took a line, and we both took a buffalo. Yep. <laughs> so that was uh, that was great. Yeah. Well, uh, it's been it's been great, and. Um, um, you know there is no place like home. I am going to miss the the time here and all the all the guys and uh, the the great experience we uh, we had while we were here and the wonderful hospitality. The staff of Out of Africa has been terrific, and the trackers and the skinners and everybody has so been so professional. Been on a bunch of hunts, but I don't think I've ever been on a hunt like this one. Well, John, you made my time here uh, something special. I want to thank you for making this long trip with me. Uh, I told you when we started planning this and kind of threw this trip together fairly quickly, as I began, believe we started talking about it about uh, the latter part of June, yep. early July, we had a number of guys that said they were gonna go and for one reason or another, they, uh, they kind of fell, fell apart one by one. And um, uh, I hate they didn't, they didn't make it because they really missed a experience of a lifetime. That's right. It's been great. It's been Appreciate great. It. Thank you for coming. Thank you.